So I actually went over. I normally don't go on these 20 minute plus rants, but I did. So just to, to kind of um, end off, just it's fine. Um, I did. I had made my last point before the film. I, I just I, it was a little bit rambly toward the end. Um, but yeah, so I do think that um, we should kind of be critical of of the kingdom in terms of solutions to uh, actual problems. But that's not the point of this video. The point of this video is talking about the idea of black supremacy versus black liberation. How are those things different and in what ways are they similar and what ways are they different? Okay, let's talk about the ways in which they're similar. My skin probably looks like hot garbage, uh, but it's fine. I'm gonna just be um, very, oh, it doesn't, holy crap, okay. I'm just gonna, that's fine, you can skip through parts until you get to what I'm talking about in real. So let's talk about what's similar about both of those. I think that there are some things within it that are very similar and that's what makes it very attractive to people. And the thing that is most similar is the recognition that black people are oppressed and that black people have been oppressed and that black people are living under a systematic oppressive system that is not built for them. What does that mean? Well, in the United States, I'll give you an example. Um, midterm elections are coming up soon here. And a lot of people who, a lot of different, there's so many people running, a lot of women are running, a lot of marginalized groups that would never run before are running. Um, not never run before, sorry, that haven't run before in such numbers. So the, just there's diversity and force, like it is a force to be reckoned with. But in Georgia, for instance, um, the election board was going working on closing seven out of nine polling sites in, in a predominantly black county. I'm going to say that again. Seven of nine. That's a lot. Because <laughs> even if it was seven out of ten, it's 70%. So it's more than 70% because it's seven out of nine. 70% plus of polls, of polling sites in a predominantly black county. So that's one. Um, another is uh, one person, he was, let's just talk about elections. Like another person, he was um, kind of on that bandwagon of, oh, you know, that people say, oh, people didn't vote, people didn't vote. There's some people who couldn't vote. So some states require a lot of documentation that if you've moved from one state to the other, you may not have. Um, but the other, the other kind of hitch here was one person, he is a poll worker, he works for the election board, he does the poll working stuff, and he was like, I did not believe all the stuff people were saying about voter, voter suppression until I found out my name wasn't even on the voting rolls. His name, he, mind you, he'd been a poll worker for years, not just one year, years in the plural, and he found that his name was taken off the voting rolls roles and then that's when it became real to him that this was something that was systematically done in predominantly um minor like in, in many minority like regions um people have heard of gerrymandering that is another way um you know having votes be consolidated so say for instance there's two counties and both counties initially have um you know ha about half black people so 50 percent black people here 50 percent black people here gerrymandering would create two counties or three but they would consolidate black people so maybe you only get one congressperson instead of the ability to vote for two because a lot of minorities generally vote democrat so instead of the potential for two Democratic candidates to win this county, they would ha draw a circle or draw district lines around. Like say, so say they mostly lived in the middle and they straddled this county on both sides. They would draw something that where all the black people would get one congressperson and the two white districts on the, predominantly white districts on the side would get one each, and those predominantly white ones would vote Republican and they would get one each. So it'd be two Republicans for every one Democrat potentially. 
Um, there's that. Um, I think people think that, oh, all women got the right to vote in 1920. They didn't. Um, a lot of black people didn't get the right to vote until, you know, the 60s. Um, a lot of Native people and, and First Nations Indigenous people did not get the right to vote until after that. The same with um, Hispanic, people of Hispanic um, said, didn't get the right to vote until after 1920. So that kickoff, the kickoff, you know, in two years that we're going to be celebrating in terms of, you know, women's right to vote, it wasn't all women. It wasn't even all people. Um, and that is a continual thing. So we talk about <clears throat> the uh, prison industrial complex. You talk about people being you know you know overly imprisoned and given you know harsh sentences so you know one person was selling maybe selling weed and they're going to get a harsher sentence than someone someone who has crack is going to get a harsher sentence than someone who has cocaine and people who have crack on them will predominantly or were predominantly black people and people who have cocaine on them are predominantly white people um crimes are committed at the same rate but people who are arrested are disproportionately people of color. Um, I forgot what county has 88% of their arrests are people of color, but only 8% of people live there, of black people live there. So there's a problem. Um, so we recognize that that is an issue. Even if you're not living in the United States, for instance, you know, you have a history of colonialism or imperialism in your country. So say you're from one of the 50 plus countries in Africa on the continent, you have this generally, I think Ethiopia was one of the only ones that doesn't have in the same way, right? It's not that they didn't have imperialism or in any kind of way, but they have not been, like they don't have, they're not celebrating Independence Day from some Western country, right? They have resisted, um, but have still been affected by those policies. They have still been affected, their movements have still been affected in ways that other countries' movements haven't been. Um, and now when we talk about relations between them um, and the country of Africa, like China and India, um, and the kind of idea about resources and, and what they're doing on the continent and their relationship to the continent, there is still that idea of, um, of that kind of supremacy. So that's one thing in common right another thing in common is the idea that people need to be free from these people need to be broken from these that there are still bondage there's still some kind of bondage there's still bounds that need to be broken for people that's another thing and those are really important those are not those are i'm not just saying that hey let's look over this let's overlook this very these very important commonalities between black supremacy and black liberation never never because that's where a lot of people buy in that's where their buy-in is but i think the most important thing for me is to talk about where that ends and why it ends where it ends because as someone who seeks black liberation and not supremacy the idea of how freedom comes about and is sustained and perpetuated is really important. I am very much in the vein of no gods, no masters, right? That there should not be monarchies, whether it's black, whether it's white, no monarchies, right? No aristocracy, none of those hierarchical systems because those systems create and sustain and perpetuate inequality and that's the problem right it's not just like you know people complain about like if you complain about the british government it's not just about them being a figurehead right and that like if the if they wanted to go to the monarchy people in the market wanted to go to war well poo you you have to go to parliament right you know that goes to parliament and things like that the problem is the idea of a monarchy. The problem is the idea of a society in which its citizens are not necessarily equal amongst themselves, amongst all of themselves. Um, not that all the people in the bottom are the same. No, all the people are the same. All the people are equal. All the people are given um, equal opportunity. There is no disproportionate um, disadvantages given to people. And so um, I actually, I think my next video, I think I'm gonna film a ton of videos today, is going to be about Black Wall Street and the idea of Black Wall Street and why it cannot be a digital place, it has to be a physical place. So 
We're gonna we're gonna talk about that in the next video. But the important the important difference, right, is that there is no one on top and that we are all equal. That is one of the very important frameworks of the idea of liberation. So we can look, you know, to, for instance, revolutionaries throughout the diaspora, right, who called, they were not calling to say, you know, we should be on top and we should be ruling over anyone but ourselves. We should be governing ourselves and determining our own path and how we spend our money for ourselves, right? Not just for our, you know, not just in terms of na nation, like this kind of nation, very specific nationalism, very fervent nationalism, but we should be free, right? We should not have masters lording over us. And that is one of the kind of important things that I want people to take away from the idea of liberation versus supremacy, right? The idea that no matter who is is in power, that there should not be, that everyone should feel as if, you know, if, if everyone wants to do that. I'm not really into the idea of being a politician. But if somebody wanted to do that, if somebody wanted to have some kind of like that, but it's not, it's the idea that there are no hierarchies, right? That that's what's important to me. Um, that is something that I want people to understand no matter what you kind of take away from the rest of this video. The theory, and I do call it a theory, of black supremacy is behind creating a system that disadvantages, because it's not just... And a lot of that comes through very, very black and white. I mean, that literally very black and white in terms of race lenses. And that is the problem because there aren't just black and white people in this world, right? It is creating a system where black people are on top and everyone else is on the bottom. It is creating a system of revenge. It is perpetuating and it, okay. This is gonna sound maybe you're not gonna maybe you're not gonna like what I'm gonna say. It validates all the things that other, particularly Western society, has done to us. It validates the slavery, it validates the rape, it validates the kidnapping of people, it validates the mass murder, it validates genocide. Why and how does it validate that? Because it seeks to recreate that system, but replace all the people who are predominantly white with people who are predominantly black. Or with people from people who are white with people who are black. And that's why I say it's very black and white, right? That kind of role reversal. So when, for instance, Killmonger says the sun will never set on the Wakandan Empire, he is emulating the British Empire. And think about how, and I said this in the first the, the kind of seri first series of videos where I talked about this, and I talked about Killmonger, the idea of replacing a white empire with a black empire. If you want to build a British empire, you have to do what the British did. You have to be able to do what the British did. And that includes rape, genocide, subjugation, kidnapping. That is what that includes. You don't just get an empire off of thoughts and prayers. You don't just get an empire off of sunshine. You, if you're building an empire like that, you're building it through blood. You're building it through unnecessary warfare for capitalistic gain. That is one really big difference. If we are looking at the ills of white supremacy and the problems of white supremacy, a lot of which include genocide, right? A lot of which include that idea. We are also looking at saying that's okay, right? It's, we're not happy you did that, but we're going to do that for our people. And it makes it okay in a way that it is not. It is not okay to kidnap people's children into chattel slavery. It is not okay to rape women, to steal people's cultural artifacts, to put them in museums, to rape the land of resources, right? It is not okay to leave people in such disadvantage that for generations people cannot rise up. It is not okay to destroy the little bit of self, of sovereignty that people have. And that is one really big difference it is and when we're looking at the recreation 
of particularly like because a lot of black supremacy idealizes in a way that it really shouldn't western um western ideas of nation building western ideas of empire building i should say and even if we're looking at other ideas about nation building the idea is that everyone is equal there is there's no king there's no king because no gods no masters doesn't literally i mean to some people it doesn't literally mean no god right it means that there's nobody lording over you the other kind of important thing i did want to get that out of the way the other important thing is that there is equality amongst all marginalized groups a lot of black supremacy means the supremacy of cisgendered heterosexual black men that's what it means it does not mean that queer people are equal particularly trans people it does not mean that women are equal it doesn't mean that disabled people are equal it does not mean that people black people of other nations are equal the underlying ideology still supports xenophobia, ableism, sexism, transmisogyny, misogynoir. That is a big problem. Because when we look at the building of empires, particularly Western empires, that black supremacy in its ideology wants to emulate for themselves, it also, a lot of people who believe in black supremacy, also espouse the idea of a particular kind of person on top. And so, for instance, in the film when Killmonger kills his girlfriend and Killmonger chokes the elder woman, what way does he, in what way does he view you know, women and women's place in this kind of black supremacist framework? So those are, those are kind of the key, very key, even if there were only two differences, there are definitely more nuanced differences, even if there were only two key differences between the idea of black liberation and black supremacy, they're really important fucking differences. They're really important differences that you should really be aware of when someone is talking about liberation, yes, but and then what, right? And then, like, are we really all free? Are, right, like one person, somebody was talking um, online to a man who was like very much espousing these black supremacist frameworks. And he was saying, oh, you know that women are queens built to submit to kings. They cannot teach a man to be a man. Only a man can teach a man to be a man. And he was like, the problem is that women have too much free reign over themselves, which they don't. Like even in this country, women don't even have full control over their bodies. Um, you know, that's the problem. He's actually, he, teach, he says, I teach young niggas to be men. That's what he specifically said. Um, and so that was one of the things that he very specifically was pointing out. Um, and it was like, oh, all these women have too much choice and too much power. The idea that you can have too many choices especially in a mate like especially in if or even if you don't want to be in a relationship the fact that you have a choice in not being in a relationship was was a problem what do you mean um yeah so i think we should always be critical of people who are in favor of black supremacy versus black um liberation and some people confuse it too some people think that we we must get to black supremacy as a as a way of black liberation no, you can get to black liberation without now turning around and enslaving and raping and murdering, pillaging, all of these other people. Take back what's yours and there you go, right? Make society equal and there you go. But that is something I really needed to, I really need to talk about that. Um, I may film, I'm in the filming mood today, so I may film more videos tonight. I'm not sure, but you'll see this over the course of a few a uh, few weeks. Oh my god. So I will see you all in the next video. Bye.